include everything. All right, guys, we're back in Code Academy. We are doing make a website. They've reworked this course. We have done it in the past, so we're doing the new version. We're in unit two, a closer look at CSS, cascading style sheets. It would have been cool if they used, it, used SAS instead of this, but that's not what they did. So it looks like we're going to be building a little page with a, a link and a background image. So let's use index.html and main.css inside the head element and index.html. So we're going to go ahead and pull up index.html, click open. So it's asking us in our head element to insert a link that contains a link. It looks like this is already done. So they've already done this for us, or perhaps I did this step first. So let's go ahead and go to next. So now you're going to see a few things. So how does this work? So in this case, in the CSS styling, we're going to define the element, the name, or the class. In this case, we're talking about h1. We're then going to use brackets. And within there, we're going to set properties. So in this case, we have color, colon, then red, semicolon to end that property. So in main.css, oh my goodness, in main.css, we want to locate our h1. So here's our first heading. This is probably an h1 right here, and we'll be able to see the changes. So we're going to say for the property font dash family, we want to give it the font Palatino. Now, the reason there's multiple fonts here and the commas is because some browsers, depending on what browser you're using, certain fonts may or may not be available. So we have backup fonts. They go in the order left to right. We're going to have Palatino, and then we're going to have Palatino Linotype, and then we're going to have Serif. And now when we run it, you'll notice that our H1 here changed. Pretty cool. And that's really what we're going to be doing is styling. Now, styling is a huge part of the way you organize and the way you construct your web pages and web applications. So this is definitely a, not as code intensive as maybe a programming language, but styling is definitely important. So in this case, uh, in the H1, we want to go ahead and add the font family. Uh, we want to add. We want to set our H1 color to red. So you'll, that's when we run it. We is now red. Not bad. So uh, it's we'll go deep sky blue. So these are some colors I didn't even know were part of styling. Uh, typically, most of the time you'll put in RGB values or you'll put in hex colors if I'm saying that right I apologize not. so Scott deep sky blue it's pretty nice I like that and then now you'll see that we can put in our hex color so we'll go ahead and do this one this is what I was talking about a second ago so you'll notice that that one was kind of a soup pea green and then we can also take the uh, we can do RGB colors as well so there's multiple ways of, of defining the color depending on what color you want. You can do RGB like so, you red, green, blue value, and now when we run it, that'll change it to what looks to be some sort of pink. Now, we're gonna be working in, it looks like our index.html. Now in here, it, oh, excuse me, we're at, so there's a div that is called hero. Now this is a class. The way you denote classes are with a dot. So classes you can reuse. Now what it's asking us to do here is set the font family so that the font family for everything in the excuse me, for everything in the div changes. So you'll notice right here that there's an it's saying 
there's a two two tags so it's saying look when you're in the hero class and it's a link this is what you what we want you to do so don't change that the more specific a class is or a heading is like this the that's kind of the order things going so in this case we're just gonna go ahead and change the font family to tre boucher ms and if they don't have that we'll take oops hell vetica and if they don't have that we'll take sans dash serif go ahead and run that and you'll notice that it changed the font style alright so typically h1's all the way up to I believe h6 the h1 being the largest h6 being the smallest they have some innate sort of sizing so in this case we're gonna set our h2 and we want to set the font size uh, to be a little bit bigger so we're just gonna go ahead and do 48 px and when we run that you'll notice that that's a little bit bigger now exactly as we wanted uh, now we want it apparently they want us to change it again and they want it to say that that's still too small so all we have to do is change it to 56 run it it's gonna get a little bit bigger pretty nice and now uh, for the P selector add font size so P is our paragraph tag now to rem let's go ahead and do that font size to rem now to m is emphasis I don't remember what rem the difference is with rem so let's see here okay so they're not exactly gonna tell us using rem values um, I don't exactly remember what rem values are I know at like EM emphasis it means they're basically two times in its normal value which we'll be doing in a second here but it's saying right here let's resize our anchor tag so what we're basically gonna do is take whatever value it is right now and we're gonna go ahead and go font size and set it to whatever would be standard to 1.25 M now this may be smaller or bigger so this is 1.25 times the normal size essentially now it decreased because 24 px is larger than what that is cool the next thing we're going to do is be adding a background image now this is pretty straightforward in this case you're going to go into the CSS and we are in our hero class now if you don't remember what the hero class contains it's this whole div so basically it's it's going to cover this whole section here it's our main div so in this case all we're going to do is go background dash url excuse me background dash image url don't forget the semicolon and in the side here we're going to put quotes and then we're going to go ahead and take this url put it in here say look this is the image you want to get from this location and now we have our sprouts so in the web browser we it seems kind of close up that is true so we can definitely style it so this is more very important because as we as technology has developed people spend more time on their phones than they do on computers and so that means that you have to kind of use responsive design and this is not necessarily responsive design but it's kind of practical design and at the end of the day responsive design is practical design um, meaning that you have to kind of think these things out like you can't really choose a perfect image but what you can do is you can then zoom out so now this is only going to cover the whole image based on the size of the window so you'll notice right here that the image isn't getting distorted we're not zoomed in but it's just going to kind of cover the entire width without distorting it so that's that finally and we want to change h2 and p give the hero selector the color property alright so we're gonna say in our hero class here we want to go ahead and just color things so if as long as none of the other classes are more specific it will inherit this value right here which is the color white and now we have white not bad
So now what we want to do is set the ID. Now IDs you only use once and these are unique. Classes you can use multiple times. So we're just going to go ahead and set this the footer. And now uh, the way you denote a ID from a class is you use the hashtag or the pound sign if you're a little bit more old school like I am. So we haven't actually given it any code yet but in this case we're just gonna go ahead and define it as font size 0.75m. We're gonna go ahead and run that. Oh excuse me rem. And that's gonna change the footer as you can see down below here it's much tinier and more standard with how things would normally look. So that was our completed lesson for CSS, a closer look at CSS. I hope you found it helpful, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Helps a ton, guys. Hey guys, I just want to say thank you to Renpix for sponsoring this video. He has his own YouTube channel that focuses on gaming. You can find out what type of content he has by clicking the annotation on his logo and showing some support to a growing streamer. So as always guys, thanks for watching the video and I'll see you next time.